how many of you know what will be your dream job? And how many of you dare to follow it despite all the challenges? When I was a child, I remember having a passion for both science and knowledge and a hunger for education. While growing up, I tried to study as hard as I could to achieve my dream job. And in this case, it was to be a professor and a scientist. So when I finished my master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences, I knew that to become a scientist, I had to do a PhD. But at that time, I knew very little what, about what a PhD was. And actually, I'm from a small village in Portugal, where a few would seek out higher education. And I'm the first and only one in my family having a PhD. And I remember that at that time, a lot of people warned me that it wasn't going to be easy. But it was my dream. It was my dream to be a scientist and a professor. And actually, it is still my dream to change this world and actually to save lives. But what I didn't know was that the responsibilities and requirements would be very challenging. Are you ready? You need to have a master's degree in a relevant scientific field. And you need to love traveling and do research in different cities and maybe in different countries. It requires a lot of hard work, and I'm talking of many weeks of 80 hours, and that includes working on weekends and long nights, being competitive, working under pressure, having negotiating and excellent leadership skills. I should also mention that you should be creative, flexible, and you should be able to handle quite well the conflicts and making tough decisions. Also, it won't be easy to find a permanent job. Actually, you need to fight a lot. And last but not least, you might suffer some kind of discrimination and power abuse. It can be like Hell's Kitchen on steroids, but a little bit more sophisticated and academic. You know, they say that academics are smart, but well, <laughs> Considering all these requirements, we might not be that smart after all. Because who in their right mind want to apply for such a position, right? <laughs> and I'm a scientist working in the nanomedicine field. And actually, my driving force to be in academia is to find emerging nano-based systems to treat aggressive brain cancers and improve the survival rate of those patients. And despite all the obstacles that I've been through in the last few years, this is the main reason why I still haven't left academia. And I've been teaching and mentoring a lot of students. And there is something all of them share in common. They told me that doing the PhD was the most stressful time of their life, often pushing them to leave academia. But now I want to tell you something. Please do not give up, because the scientific world needs you. And I want to tell you that there are amazing benefits of being in academia, such as the flexibility and the freedom that you have to work in a field that you find meaningful for you, to follow your passion, to collaborate with different international researchers and do great brainstorming. However, the lack of funding and job security to either publish or perish culture combined with the workplace discrimination and power abuse is forcing many talented scientists to leave academia. Therefore, I have a challenge for all scientists that are listening. I would like to tell you to start working a new concept that I call emotional salary. And what is this emotional salary? By definition, emotional salary is a non-financial gain employees obtain from working that motivates them and leads to personal and professional development. And 
In academia, this could be the amazing feeling of helping cancer patients, like in my case, or it can be the excitement of finding a new signaling pathway, or also it can be the development of a new artificial intelligent program. In academia, it can also be the feeling of seeing your collaborators at international conferences or the sense of publishing your latest paper that you have been working so hard in the last three years and now is finally out and can have an impact in our society. I want to tell you something. In academia, your main salary is not always a financial gain. It is more about intellectual stimulation, the opportunity for personal and professional growth, and honestly, most importantly, the opportunity to contribute to advancement of knowledge. You are paid for a chance to work on subject that you find personally meaningful and interesting for you. However, we need to guarantee these emotional payouts for our students and for the next generation of scientists. So I'd like now to call all scientists to invest in emotionally salary. And for that, I want to tell you four steps that you should take into consideration. First, granting more freedom to our PhD students and postdocs for their own ideas and to carry out their own projects. Second, building a sense of belonging in your workplace. Because, you know, feeling like part of a team can make them more confident, persistent, ultimately leading to a better performance. Third, formulating medium and long-term career plans but also help them to achieve it. And fourth, ensuring that your team has a great work-life balance. So in a nutshell, remember, first, giving more freedom in academia. Second, creating a healthy workplace. Third, making medium and long-term career plans. And fourth, allowing a proper work-life balance. Knowing my life purpose, educating myself for an excellent leadership, being humble and becoming an inspiration. This is actually what I'm working on currently to be a better scientist and a better person. So let's combine our minds together and make the academia the way that I imagine it as a child. Because like everything in life, if we want to change something, we have to make the first step. Be the example. <laughs>